So thank you to everyone for inviting me and thank you to the rest of you who are here. It looks like there's about 80 people. Thank you for the honor of your time. We're going to talk about inner source sparking the fire. Now, why? Well, I really enjoyed Russ's um, introduction and what I know of inner source is that it's rocking and rolling, it's getting hot and there's a potential for a big fire to be sparked, but you're not there yet 100%. So I'm going to give you some ideas for getting your fire sparked a little more in your organization. So I have about 30 minutes with you. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you get motivated to spark your own fires in your organization after we talk. So um, as Daniel mentioned, I am the author of Fearless Change and More Fearless Change books. And this is a book of patterns. And thank you very much, Russ, for giving a nice introduction to patterns. These are patterns not for making, but not for inner source, but for making change happen in your organization. So I give lots of talks to lots of technology groups who are trying to make change happen in their organization. And over a period of 10 years for the first book and nine years for the second book, we interviewed leaders of change all over the world from big companies, small companies, for-profit, not-for-profit. And here's the important part. We interviewed people of all ages who were making change happen in their organizations. Very impressive 20-some-year-olds, 30-some-year-olds, as well as 60-year-olds who were still struggling because as one CIO told us, you can't rewire people's brains. Even though she was a CIO, it was just as hard for her to make change happen in the organization as someone who was in their 20s with a great idea. So we coined the term powerless leader because everybody in the organization who wants to make change happen is at some level powerless to, and you can't rewire people's brains. So you need tools to do that. And that's what fearless change provides. It's a collection of patterns that you can use to help bring a change into your organization. And so each pattern, you consider it a tool in your toolbox. Some of them you'll like, some of them you'll use a lot, some of them you won't use at all. And all patterns have these particular um, context, problem, solution, consequences, known uses. I love that you're collecting known uses for inner source. But as Russ said, just like the inner source patterns, patterns for change are repeatable solutions to common problems in making change happen. Whereas the inner source patterns are repeatable solutions to common problems for making inner source happen. So that's the distinction. So these, inner, these patterns can be used as a language because all of them have a name and I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna introduce you to about eight of them this morning and you'll have names that you could actually use. And as Russ already pointed out, you have, um, it, you're working on inner source patterns. I saw things like gig market pay, place, 30 day warranty, repository, activity score. So yay, good for you. And you're collecting the known uses, good for you. But today I'm here to talk about patterns for change, how to make change happen. So the next 25 minutes of your life is the patterns that you, I'm going to introduce you to about eight patterns that you can use to spark the fire for inner source. I want to be able to move you from ambition to action. So you probably see things in your organization as thinking we can do better with inner source. Or you're going to hear things at the summit. You're going to go, oh, I want to go back and help people do this. Well, that's a change. And so I want to help you do that in the next 25 minutes to spark the fire. Maybe you have a little bit of an ember going, but you wanna get more going and you're gonna get some good ideas at the summit. So I want you to be ready for that. So as Russ already mentioned, inner source is something that's well known out there. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of people attending this conference. That's not the issue. So, Let's talk about a story of Ellen and Thomas, and maybe Ellen and Thomas are on this ISPO working group that Russ mentioned, the working group scaling I, inner source in your organization. 
And so what they're doing is they're going, okay, we got some interest going, but we want to do more with inner source. So they're out there talking about it as much as they can. And they talk about how inner source will give them effective code reuse. And they're talking about how inner source will give the organization high quality code. And they're talking about how inner source will give comprehensive documentation. Okay, this stuff sounds great. So people should be really excited. Inner source will help with strong collaboration. Inner source will give us a healthy culture. And so they're out there saying all these things. And of course, the decision makers are going, yes, we support you 100%. And we're going to give you all these resources to make inner source happen completely across the organization and consistently across the organization. All right. Whew. Is that story true? Probably not. It's a good story, but I'm guessing for those of you who have been touting, touting the advantages and benefits of, of inner source in your organization, you are not having that experience. So why? You're talking about it, you're telling people about it, you're reading about it, and yet it's just not sparked enough in your organization. What's going on here? So let's talk about what Ellen and Thomas could do better. Ellen and Thomas are starting out well. Let me be clear. If you're an Ellen or Thomas or somebody else, the first thing you need to do is share information with people. What is this inner source thing? All right. People need to know, but don't stop there. That's only the first step. Connecting with their logic. Get them thinking about it. The reason that doesn't work in its entirety, because none of us are Mr. Spock. So I'm, I'm wondering if all of you remember Mr. Spock from Star Trek. He was a Vulcan and he thought completely logically. Occasionally he thought with emotion because one of his parents had, uh, was, a, was a human. But anyway, for the most part, he was entirely logical and he was actually annoyed by the humans who allowed emotions to come into their decision making. All right, that's a fictional character. None of us are Mr. Spock. When you give people information, these are the kind of things that happen. Some people might go, yes, in various degrees of excitement. But most people will listen and smile and say, well, thank you for telling me that. That's interesting. And then some people will say, oh, my gosh, yes, that's interesting. But please don't give me one more thing to do. Please don't give me one more thing to do. And then you get these kind of reactions. You said, what? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, where am I going to fit this into my day? This is such a headache. I have so many other projects going on. But the thing that might worry you the most is when you see this. The, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I really don't care. We need to use this information as data. This is data, how people are reacting, how they are feeling about the information you're giving them. And here's the deal, we're good at sharing information. We're not as good as dealing with how people feel about the, or, about the information, how people are feeling about the information. How are they reacting? That kind of makes us uncomfortable. So let's talk about how we can deal with that. So what we're gonna do in this next part of the presentation is to connect with what people are feeling. Now I know some of you are wanting to hit the leave meeting. It's like, oh, she's going to talk about feelings. No, 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 no. But I want you to think about the fact that maybe what you're doing, just sharing information, is not getting that fire sparked enough. In other words, we need to do something else. So here's what I'm going to offer you. So this is the first pattern. It's a fearless change pattern, and all the patterns in my presentation will be in blue. So I'd like you to think about the last time somebody told you something and you were saying, okay, I understand what you're telling me, but in the background, you're saying, yeah, I really don't care. That probably happens to you on a weekly, if not a daily basis. Somebody says something and you go, well, that's interesting, but you don't really care enough to move on it. Well, that's what happens when you try to connect logically rather than emotionally to make an emotional connection with somebody. 
So this is how we're going to we're going to talk about how people feel about InnerSource. And we're going to help people care about the information you're giving them. You're probably very good at give, giving information, but you may not be as good about getting them to care about it because that's what gets people moving. That's what gets people moving. So emotional connection, make a logical connection. Yes, give them the information, but also make them an emotional connection. Help them care about what you're saying. So these are some of the patterns. The patterns names are in blue. These are the patterns I'm gonna talk about this morning to help you create an emotional connection. There are a lot more, but I only have 30 minutes with you total. All right, so first of all, elevator pitch. I bet many of you have heard this term, elevator pitch. Uh, so elevator pitch is a couple sentences that you keep with you all the time so that you can talk about inner source when anybody asks. And you might memorize your elevator pitch. And an elevator pitch often contains what? So you might say something like, we should adopt inner source, which is the use of open source principles and practices for software development within our organization. People go, okay. And you might also include an outcome. This will break down silos, encourage and scale inner internal collaboration, accelerate new engineer onboarding and identify opportunities to contribute software back to the open source world. And you might get some of those eye rolling or, oh my gosh, don't give me another thing to do. So we got to get people to care. And this is where wake up call comes in. You need to include why. What is the problem or challenge that inner source will solve in your organization? In your organization. Now, I don't know all your organizations and the challenges and the problems you have, but I'll give you an example from agile software development. So I once heard somebody who was trying to bring more agile software development into his organization talk about the what, what agile is, talk about the expected outcomes, da -da. but then he went on the next, he took the next step and added a why. He started telling his stories when that particular organization had some in instances when customer feedback was not incorporated in a timely manner. That was a wake up call. People were like, whoa, I didn't know that whoa, we need to do something. And then the same guy came along and said, well, let me tell you more about agile software development. So see that wake up call got them to care about the what and the expected outcome. It created an emotional attachment, an emotional connection to the problem that he talked about. So an elevator pitch with a wake up call. Two patterns. Now, we don't want to go around always talking about the problems. A lot of wake-up calls constantly, constantly can get people to run away from us. We start to become the creepy person who's always talking about problems. So two more patterns. Accentuate the positive with a hometown story. So maybe you've done your elevator pitch and you, you're talking about it and you're using a wake-up call. But you want people to believe that they can actually solve the problem that you that you mentioned, that you brought up in your wake up call, or maybe at least part of the problem. Well, you can tell a story. Tell a story of how you believe that inner source can become part of your organization. So stories are great. They connect the dots in information. So that's what I did with Ellen and Thomas. Rather than saying, oh, you know, when you talk about inner source with just facts, um, people, people kind of go, oh, yeah, whatever. But I gave this story about Ellen and Thomas doing it. it people enjoy listening to stories much better than a bunch of facts. 
they remember what she said and they can repeat it. Hey, I heard the story of Ellen and Thomas at the conference. And by the way, I'm going to finish that story. So it didn't sound like they were being too successful, but I will finish their story in this presentation. People emotionally connect to stories. So when I told the story of Ellen and Thomas, you probably felt something like, is she nuts? That doesn't ever happen. Or that isn't happening in our organization. Or wow, I would love to have that happen at our organization. So people emotionally connect to a story. And if you want to tell a story, you just list the points you want to make. Well, this is what I want to tell people. Here's the points I want to make. What is the main message I want to leave them with? What's the main message? And then you develop a story. It doesn't have to be true as long as you tell them it's not true. You're just trying to connect the dots for them. So think about how you can tell more stories and use less amounts of data and PowerPoint slides as I'm doing today. So a story gives people hope that it can be done. This is how you see it happening in the organization. Stories. Now, people often ask me, what is my favorite pattern since we have 64 of them? And it is imagine that. And it's, I love imagine that because I've seen it done so many times. And it's great at guiding people to, to create their own stories. So the hometown story pattern was you developing a story of how you see something. Help people develop their own story. Here's a picture from the book, which shows an imagine from the Fearless Change book, which shows an imagine that session. But you can do imagine that sessions online. You can take a couple minutes in a meeting, maybe the first 10 minutes of a meeting to do an imagine that session. Here's how they work. First of all, discuss the present. Okay, so what's going on with um, our development time? What's going on with onboarding new engineers? What's going on with our collaboration across the organization? You know, just get people talking. Get people talking about it. They create their own wake-up call. Like, whoa, yeah, we got these problems. And then you ask, after you've done that, you ask, how would things look if we adopted InnerSource? So you're not saying we should adopt InnerSource to address all those problems you just brought up. But how would it look if we just adopted InnerSource? And what happens here is people feel the possibilities. They're not being told, they feel the possibilities because they use their imaginations rather than their ears to develop the possibilities. So they're thinking about them. I've seen many different Imagine That sessions done both online and in person. And you could just see people's body language change even online because they're involved in imagining the possibilities. You can do this as often as possible as you're working through getting inner source um, scaling. You can do an Imagine That session every once in a while to get people thinking about the possibilities. So those are things that you can do in a group, but the personal touch is important. Every chance you get, talk to people about inner source. But I encourage you to do this. A little less of what do you think about inner source and how do you feel about inner source? And discuss the challenges. We're not as good, and I can speak personally, we're not as good doing this in the workplace because we want to show that we got our act together totally. We're afraid to share our fears. But if you give someone a, a welcome to that, let's talk about what we're concerned about. Here's what I'm concerned about. So maybe raise that first. And so you can't address the challenges with inner source if you don't uncover them first. So look for opportunities to ask people, how do you feel about inner source? This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm worried about. And then open the possibilities for them to discuss theirs. So those are two patterns called peer, fearless, fearless and personal touch. I almost said fearless touch. No, personal touch with fearless. So when you have people that are skeptics about something, there's a lot of fear going on. 
the person fears you because you're talking about something they don't like and you fear them because they're being skeptical. So sitting down and talking about your fears creates less fear. And the personal touch, of course, is obvious. You're doing this one-on-one -on -one or maybe in a small group. Personal touch with fear less. Okay, back to the story of Ellen and Thomas. So Ellen and Thomas had this elevator pitch and they were talking and talking about inner source, but then they realized, wait, we got to add a wake up call. We got to talk about what the specific challenge in our organization is that inner source can address. Give people a wake up call so they can feel it. Wow, we didn't know that. And then they didn't want to go around just always talking about problems. So they decided to accentuate the positive by telling some stories. So they told some stories about how they thought inner source could scale up in the organization, just their stories. And then they invited people to do an imagine that, to tell their own stories. Huh, remember, imagine that was let's talk about these particular issues. What would happen if we? adopted inner source. And then every chance that Ellen and Thomas got, they sat with people one-on-one -on -one or in small groups and talked about the fears, the concerns people had. But Ellen and Thomas were honest first about sharing their own fears and concerns to get people talking. Now, these are just a few patterns. There are a lot more. But these few patterns start developing a group identity. One by one, people start caring about inner source. They're not just hearing the information, they're feeling it. So another story. This is a collection of birds on a wire. I was at the beach and I was watching the sunset and I started noticing a few birds come on a wire. And then over the time of about 20 minutes where I was wa watching the sunset, more birds and more birds and more birds. So eventually there was a whole heck of a lot of birds on that wire. That's how you need to think about change. Change happens one person at a time. Change is about bringing people on board, not all at once, but one, here's a story, bird at a time. So when you think about and you're frustrated about how slow it's happening, think of this beautiful bird picture. That's a hometown story. Feel it like, OK, cool. I need to think in terms of bringing people on one or two at a time. And that's what these kind of patterns that emotionally connect people, get them to care and they come on board and you're starting to develop a group identity for inner source. So as I said, there are many more patterns. Um, we have 64. We will soon have a fearless change app um, where you could put them on your phone. Um, so we have the app for iPhone and we'll have one for an Android eventually. You can go to fearlesschangepatterns.com and you can get a summary of all these patterns and you can download a summary of all the patterns. But um, those are just a summary. Keep that in mind. So if you're overwhelming, if this is overwhelming to you, this bird thing, one at a time, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever. It is a step-by-step -step process, but the steps look more like this. You know, it's difficult. So you have to think about incremental improvements and there's going to be failures along the way. And my coffee cup is on a um, coaster that says, failure is not the opposite of success. It is an integral part of it, an integral part of it. Failure is an integral part of success. So keep that in mind when you take a few steps backward or run into broken steps. And here's the patterns you want to use. Take a baby step. Think about one of the patterns for change. Use it. Reflect on it. Decide what you want to do next. Reflect on it. Decide what you want to do next reflect on it. That's how you get incremental improvements with a steady commitment and continual movement. In the face of obstacles and uncertainty, this is not easy. 
So when you, if you want to go to fearlesschangepatterns.com, you can download, like I said, little cards with summaries of each of the patterns. So it's a very small summary. And you can play something called the fearless journey, which helps you get unstuck. So you might be somewhere going, okay, I'm learning lots of stuff at the Inner Source Summit. I don't know where to start. I'm stuck. I have other people that are stuck. There's, we have this fearless journey called a game, but it's not really a game where you look at where you are now and where you want to be. And then you play with the cards in between, as you see in these pictures. Now, these are three different examples of when I led Fearless Journey at three different times, but it's also you can do this online. So people have put the cards on Miro and then played with them online. I've seen that too. That's really cool. So again, you can find that more about that on our website. If you want to actually figure out now, what do I do next? How can we get unstuck? So the past 30 minutes of your life, hopefully... I sparked a fire in you to move from ambition to action. And you're gonna be able to spark a fire in your organization. I only had less than 30 minutes with you, so I really couldn't tell you everything you needed to know, but I just getting it going, getting unstuck, that's a start. So you were introduced to patterns that can help you get things moving and start to develop a group identity. Start to get those birds on the wire. Getting those birds on the wire. So here's the patterns I talked about out of the 64. And I wanna leave you with this thought. If you're thinking about doing something, taking a baby step, take a baby step, go for it. This is my favorite quote from Wayne Gretzky, who in the United States is a hockey player. And he says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So another story, take a shot, take a shot. Try to get one or two birds on the wire. Take a baby step, time for reflection, next baby step. And each baby step is one of the patterns. Your baby step is one of the patterns. Try it. Do time for reflection. Try, some, try another pattern. Time for reflection. Remember, your patterns are a toolbox and you use them when you need them. So I end with my name and my contact information.